Georgies and welcome back to the channel but me jumping around my fish room is probably not why you're here. The reason that I wanted to make this video is just to say a huge huge thank you to everyone who has supported me up until this point because we hit 600 subscribers and I just want to say a massive thank you. In my opinion it's a massive milestone for me because we've only had this channel for such a short period of time but we've achieved so much and um, yeah just wanted to convey my regards as a huge thank you to each and every single one of you and let you know that the support and the time that you've spent watching my videos has actually allowed me to grow and progress to reach this point. We've got tons of amazing projects, one of which is the biggest that I've ever tackled in my entire life and um, I definitely want to make sure that I am uh, bringing you along to speed with all of that. But the point of this video is to do a full fish room tour, which is really great to say because I've got six aquariums that are running, one of which doesn't have water or fish or anything of that matter of fact, but I'm going to explain what I'm doing there. But um, yeah, just want to bring you up to speed because we mostly have a look at the five foot aquarium, but why not start with that? Okay, so the first aquarium that we see on the edge of the fish room is my five foot tank. This is where the channel started. My first video was made in this same spot in front of, oh yeah, in front of this same tank and uh, without this aquarium, none of what we have now would be possible and this YouTube channel basically wouldn't even exist. So just want to say a huge thank you to this aquarium for allowing me to do what it's done until this point. But um, it's gone through quite a fair few changes which I've got completely documented on the channel. It was a planted grow out tank, uh, sorry, a planted aquarium. Then it was a African cichlid tank to what it is now which is a predator grow out aquarium. And it's so cool to be to say that because I have got some very very cool species in this aquarium. It started off with my Jack Dempsey Jill, she's a five-year-old Jack Dempsey and um, the most favourite fish that I have in my fish room is her. I do pick favourites and um, yeah without her this aquarium wouldn't exist so um, because she was growing up to a fairly you know decent size I had to upgrade the tank she was in so I moved her into this aquarium. From there we've acquired a few other um, South American species being a black belt cichlid, we've got some silver dollars, a banded leperinus, a handful of plecos and um, the list keeps on growing so I definitely do want to be adding you know a fish like an Oscar maybe a few other South American cichlids and if you guys have anything that you're looking to rehome maybe let me know but um, yeah I just love the way that this tank is doing now from there I wanted to expand my native Australian sort of fish list after I got my Australian lungfish and I then ended up getting some jade perch just to test out native Australian fish behavior they are growing phenomenally well, too well for that matter of fact. They are out competing everything in this aquarium and um, I'm really considering what I might have to do with them. But from there, I knew that I wanted to get the king of Australian fish and that is the barramundi. And um, surprise, I now have a barramundi that's growing out, but um, I'll definitely make more of a detailed video on the that specific fish because I am really, really loving just how fast it's growing, its behavior and everything like that. And I'll definitely share that with you. Now, just a disclaimer, you may notice some African cichlids in this tank. They are just the very last of the African cichlids that I've been rehoming. And they will be out of this tank very, very shortly. But for the time being, they're not hurting anything and they're perfectly fine to remain in this aquarium as is. But that's a quick summary of the fly foot. And I say we move to the lungfish and goldfish tank. <laughs> so this here is my four foot shallow tank or low boy aquarium. It's four feet long, two feet wide and only about a foot tall gifted to me by my local aquarium store Aquatico Aquarium. I'll have all of their details in the description down below but when they created their own high quality line of tanks called the Bio Eco Tanks they were kind enough to gift me this aquarium to make a review on and it's got to be my favorite aquarium that I own. Though the five foot has got a lot of significance to me, the four foot just looks so stylish. It's got such an amazing array of fish, uh, which we'll talk about now. So primarily this aquarium houses my native Australian lungfish. The rarest fish that I own, the most expensive fish that I own, and um, second favorite to Jill, my Jack Dempsey. Um, but I just feel so privileged to be able to own a fish like this. Just how hard it is to acquire one of these fish alone legally. Um, but the fact that I am able to own it for the past three months at this point has been great. I did get it on my 18th birthday as well, which just adds to that upping factor as well. But um, from there, the lungfish, 
uh, was the primary fish in this aquarium, except for the fact that it only comes out like 10 minutes per day when the lights go off, which is great when you pay $1,000 for a fish and it only comes out the 10 minutes. But um, um, it was the, the main fish in this aquarium. From there though, I was sort of tossing and turning about what I would add to this tank and that's where Irene, my amazing viewer, reached out to me and she was kind enough to gift me some really high quality A-grade goldfish, which we'll have a look at now. So, um, Irene has also gifted me tons of fish in the past before and the silver dollars are in the five foot, but these goldfish aren't just your regular run-of-the-mill goldfish. These are A-grade, very expensive um, imported goldfish worth a few hundred dollars each. And the fact that someone has heart to be able to gift something like that to someone else is out of this world. And I will be keeping these goldfish to the end of their time. But to look at the four different types of goldfish that we have, we've got one big rancher. That's the biggest out of the four goldfish. Uh, my favorite out of the four as well. Then we do have two demikins. I love these demikins because they have those sort of bubbly eyes like a moor goldfish would have. Um, just very, very beautiful colors and um, they're super, super active in terms of all the other goldfish. And the final one is this really cool hybrid oranda and pearl scale goldfish. And um, it really has opened my eye now in terms of the different grades and the different qualities of fancy goldfish. And I definitely do think that when we um, eventually move to a bigger place, which is happening soon, um, I will be setting a goldfish only aquarium. But in terms of the other fish, to quickly have a look, there are um, some black widow tetras, which Irene gave me as well. They're my most favorite tetra out of all of the tetra species at this point. Super underrated, very fantastic schooler. They get pretty big. Um, and then I am also growing out a fish for the five foot, which is a flag tail Prochilotus. And um, he's doing really well, just chomping on all the algae in this aquarium. So um, very simple, very effective, but very, very elegant aquarium that I have as well. And the final stage of the fish room is this aquarium rack here. On this rack, there are four tanks, um, three of which are wet, meaning they've got water, and one of which doesn't, but we'll touch on that in just a sec. To look at the first aquarium that we have on the rack, this here is my first ever saltwater aquarium, and I went right into the deep end in making sure that I was able to get corals and set this up as a mini reef. From the course that I've had this tank, it's been doing fantastically well. Everything has been going exactly as it's meant to be. Haven't had any pests like flatworms or aptasia. I haven't had any um, diseases or anything of that sort or algae problems. Everything has just been perfectly stable and maturing really, really well. And the reason I think for that is just because um, the amount of research that I originally put into um, setting up a saltwater tank, making sure I know the ins and outs of the parameters, what causes issues, what makes things balance. And a big shout out to that goes to Parker's Reef. After watching his Idiot Proof Reef Tank series, I was able to gain so, so much knowledge on how to set up a tank properly and effectively. And it just shows you the success of this aquarium. Um, now we did have two clownfish, however, as notorious um, as they are for saltwater fish being jumpers, one of the clownfish found the smallest gap, and I've got lids on this tank, everything is, you know, I've tried to make it, you know, jump proof. It found the smallest gap and cleared the tank, and I don't really want to be adding another clownfish into this tank, just in case um, it develops a disease or something of that sort and upsets the balance of this tank. It's doing so far so good, and I don't want to risk it because I don't have a proper quarantine system for um, saltwater fish, so yeah, I'm just avoiding that. But then we move on to the second tank on the rack, and this has no water in it, and it's actually a terrestrial moss grow out that I'm doing. Just a bit of a project and, uh, and a, a learning curve just to experience some of these uh, mosses in there. There's nothing too um, crazy, just a bunch of different types of mosses which have been uh, sourced out from my local area. We've got some alpine, some wood mosses, some stuff that grows on rocks, and so far they're doing really well. It's just um, opening up the lid, misting the tank, and um, just got them on a bed of aqua soil, and it's been pretty good so far, and I'm enjoying just how these mosses are growing and keeping up, so I'm a big fan of that. But then we move to the bottom rack, and that's where we do have tanks again. And uh, we've got two aquariums, one of which is a, a very similar tank to the saltwater tank, and that is my plant grow out in there. I'm just growing some plants to then sell. Uh, so I've got a bunch of different mosses being weeping, Christmas, fissidens, 
um, uh, a few actually different types of fissidens, bruce moss, and talking about bruce, I've got some brucephalandra species in there as well, which again, I'm just growing out to maybe use in a future planted tank or those types of things. In terms of fish, I uh, just got my uh, school of cherry barbs along with two swordtails in there, which do really good algae cleanup, and a bunch of Malaysian trumpet snails, which I really love. Snails, I'm a big fan of. Some people hate them, I really love them. They do fantastic jobs for um, freshwater aquariums and just a big fan of snails. Then we move over to a smaller cube aquarium and that one just has my shrimp, which were gifted to me by the shrimp corner. And um, yeah, they're just doing pretty good in that aquarium. They're just growing out. And um, yeah, I just want to make that a, a full-blown shrimp tank and maybe consider getting some guppies or endlers to breed in that aquarium, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that, so if you have any ideas, let me know. Alrighty, Vodgies and Widgies, thank you so much for watching this fish room tour. If you want to see further updates or in-depth videos of the tanks, specifically each and every single fish, and also any of the equipment that I'm running, please do let me know. But as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay on Australian, Bodgie and the fish room out.